Uh, the weather gets a little bit nicer. Uh, I'm sorry, I am. Am I now on Facebook Live? Yes. Okay. Welcome, welcome all of our Facebook Live people as well. Uh, we have the unique privilege of having uh, two of our local professional triathletes tonight. Uh, we'll uh, let them uh, talk about a little bit about their background, and then they're going to go through some uh, race day strategies and stuff uh, stuff that they even think about when they uh, step to the starting line. So we have uh, Jared Shoemaker and Alicia Cash. Looks like Alicia and Jared uh, that want to spend time with us, to, that want to help us, and uh, without further ado, uh, I'll let them speak, and then at the end we will have time for questions. If you do want to have a seat, that's cool too. If you want to stay in the back, that's fine too. If you're, it's like eighth grade English class back there where everyone sits in the uh, the back. Uh, without further ado, we appreciate them coming out. Yeah, it's good to finish. You can use it if you want, you don't have to. So, basically, <laughs> so we're just going to go over a little stuff. We've printed a couple of these out, um, and it's it's a couple of things that are basically the race day preparation guide, which, which we'll go over. Um, you can go so much more in depth than this, but this is kind of... Um, you know, high level overview. So I'll hand a couple of these out. If you, if other people want them, then we, I, we printed eight out. Okay, um, I can. But we we will have Kimberly print out, so you can grab it after. So I'll just hand these out and or you people can take can one and pass yeah. it on. There you go. Um, but basically, we'll we'll go through some of this and then head out for a run. I'm gonna run. Alicia's gonna hang out here. Uh, and then we'll be around, we can chat on the run, we can chat after, come back early. So that's kind of what we're hoping to do this afternoon. Okay, Alicia's going to start though, because she's the one who actually has the, she's sports psychology and master's in athletic counseling, so <laughs> she actually knows what she's talking about, I've just done it for a bunch of years. Um, yeah, so in addition to being a professional traffic in my degree, which I can't believe how long ago I finished, <laughs> was feeling old. Um, my undergrad's in sports psych, my master's degree is in athletic counseling. So this is sort of just my huge area of interest and in my very part-time job. Travel is simply the, the job, but this is my very part-time job and um, that's something I'm very passionate about. So this is a topic that we could talk about for hours and we could spend a lot of time on. But I really wanted to just talk about how to create consistent results by controlling what you can control between the time you get up in the morning and the time you get to the start line. And two of the easiest ways to do that are race day routines and packing lists. Packing lists sound very overrated, but our sport has a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of details, not only are there three sports, the bike alone, if you think about all the little bits and bobs that you need, especially as you race in longer course racing, there's just a ton of stuff to remember, and race morning, I don't know about you guys, I don't sleep a ton the, the night before a race, I usually wake up really nervous, and there's a lot of stuff dancing through my head that it's really easy to forget something. And we're humans, not robots. So packing lists help eliminate that. And it is no fun showing up to a race without a helmet, or two left shoes, or you know, you go down the list of just little things that are easy to forget, or you see that person in transition, who has a pump, and they're running around just like mental on race morning when it's really easy to pack your own, and they make little travel pumps. Um, so I put an example on this handout of really, really simple stuff to be putting in a transition bag. Actually, funnily enough, a few years ago, if you want to give the triathlete in your life the best Christmas holiday gift ever. I did these for Jared and his siblings because they all happen to be professional triathletes at one point. Was I made them a transition bag and I went and I filled this bag and I put all of these items in it. So I put the perfect sized elastics. You know, we all buy that multi pack of elastics and pick out all the perfect <laughs> elastics that are exactly the right size for mounting your bike shoes and having things like super glue in there, um, hair ties, feminine products for the ladies, electrical tape, safety pins. 
sunscreen, zip ties. Zip ties have saved my races so many different times. I've fixed a helmet strap with them. But you never know when it's like, have your MacGyver kit. And so that's super important. Um, and then there's a super simple race day packing list. Um, and obviously mine is a lot more detailed than this, and I'm sure yours will be too. But this is just like a overview to get you started if you don't have a race day packing list. And um, some people, some of those like really cool multi-sport backpacks will have them like on the insides of the bags, and those are handy too. But feel free to make your own, and I really strongly encourage you to. Uh, whether it's laminated, whether it's on your phone. I personally have one in my pocket with a pen on race day and I'm like going through and I, I, I have to cross it off because once I've crossed it off, I can let go of worrying about that. So when I say pump tires and I pump my tires, yep, they're at 100 PSI, close that press step, done, cross it off. I don't think about that anymore. It's like closing the door on that because there's so many little things that you can think about as you're walking to the start, do I do this, do I do this? When that piece of paper is all crossed off, you can just walk <laughs> and chat with your friends or admire the sunrise or whatever it might be. Um, and yeah, and the whole goal of this is just to get you to the start line calm, confident, in control. And I put what are your core values, core beliefs on there. It's I put four different things. Those are my four things that I want to feel on the start line every time I get to the start line. That's the way I want to feel. And these two simple things, packing lists and having a race day routine. And in addition to my packing list, I literally have step one, walk to transition area. Step two, rack bike. Like, break it down really simply. And again, I'm crossing everything off as I go. And my competitors can vouch for me. I have that pen in my pocket. I'm not lying. This is like exactly what I do on race day. And that. Doing those things allows you to get to the start line, confident and in control. And when we have these routines, when we do the same thing, when you have a great race, write about it. What? Why did it go so well? Figure it out. Because if you do something different every single time, you're leaving a lot to chance. And um, you know, if you're really working hard towards a goal, having the opportunity to create consistent results and eliminate things that might take away from your performance. We just, we train too hard, we invest too much time and energy to, into the sport to to have like something small, but there really is something small and controllable to distract from your race on race day. So um, those are like our two main points for tonight, packing lists and have a routine for race day that leaves time for lines to get in parking lots, <laughs> lines to get your wheels pumped. Lines to check in the transition area, lines for the porta potty, <laughs> all of those things that you have to budget for on race day. Because you'd be way better just sitting on the start line with your eyes cropped, eyes closed, legs crossed, not stressing, than panicking and running around. Anything to add from a coaching perspective? <laughs> yeah, I think from an athlete perspective, for me, doing a lot of IT racing, it was pretty simple for me. It was just I need my bike, I need my running shoes, goggles. The second I switched to long course, all of a sudden it was like, holy cow, there is this list of things that I need. There's things I need on my bike. There's backup things I need in case the things on my bike, you know, it's like, it just goes on and on. And for me, it, it was hard to sleep the first couple nights because I was like, oh my gosh, do I have this? Did I do this? And so actually creating a list and checking things off was, was, was it made me sleep better and I actually was able to relax going into the race. So it, that for me was a big change, switching to, especially Ironman, you need two of everything, even on the bike, just to make sure that you get to the end. Because something is going to happen during the race. It always, it always does. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, and and I also look at it from the perspective of you know you put so much time and energy to go to that race. It costs a lot of money to go race an Ironman. Most likely, it's not the one down the street in Haines City. It's somewhere else in the country. So you've also gone there, and and so it's you know it's an investment, and you want to have you know a really good outcome from that, and that. To me, it's trying to prepare and trying to, you know, do a good job of being ready for race morning is really important because if you get behind, you get stressed out on race morning, that's, that, that can put you over the edge. You can have a bad swim and everything goes down there. You're going to use energy, you're going to use mental energy, physical energy, and, and those things are things that you can't pick back up on race morning. You can, you know, if you freak out the day before, you can sleep it off. But in race morning, if you freak out, it's going to affect your race. So it's it's about being really prepared and just kind of in control of race morning. Yeah. Do you 
you guys have any questions? Everybody just wants to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that can apply to other kinds of racing as well, not just triathlon. It doesn't matter if you go in a long trail run or yeah. any other kind of race. Absolutely. There's probably a lot of just exclusive runners, and that was going to be something I was going to follow up after Jared. Um, whether it's a running race, open water swim race, um, shoot, it doesn't even have to be sport. Like whether you have a big presentation coming up, it doesn't matter. Like creating things, things like a list of things that you're going to need to be successful in whatever that endeavor is, and backups for that. Like I'm thinking back to like biggest presentation of my life, my thesis defense. Like I had, okay, if the projector now I'm dating myself breaks, <laughs> then here's my backup USB stick, and if that breaks, here's a handout for 75 people that are going to be sitting there, you know, and then if that breaks. You know, how am I going to go through, like, I, it, it's about just having a plan for success even when the environment doesn't want you to. <laughs> you know, when stuff breaks, shoelaces come undone, like Jared at a world championship, you know, these elastic laces, they, they came undone. And his shoes were falling off his feet at world championships. And so at the Olympics, I sewed his laces to every single <laughs> eye hole. You know, now they make laces that... They can't budge from my holes, but this is before that. <laughs> so, yeah, like little things can go wrong, and we're not like talking about this to make you think of all the things that can, you know, go wrong on race day, and then you're like Eeyore walking around with a thundercloud of doubts. Um, but it's more that confidence that you can have when you know you're ready for any, everything and anything that can go wrong. Like, and uh, so, whether it's a running race or a swimming race, it doesn't matter what that sporting endeavor is. Um, if all you walk away from tonight is to create lists and to create a plan for what for that day of, um, then tonight was a success. <laughs> so, um, but if you think of, if, and if you have any other questions, feel free to speak up. But um, if you have any burning questions during the run, Jared will be there and I'll be here hanging out. If someone doesn't feel like running, I'll be hanging out here. <laughs> I think we all need to know how to fix a helmet strap with a zip tie. Oh, yeah. You know, you know how, like... And how to get past the official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how, like, helmet straps just, um, you know, it weaves through, and then there's usually that extra little piece that the, uh, the tail end pops out of, essentially, it just, like, had come undone. I reefed on it with a zip tie, snipped it, and did the job. Because you, <laughs> you can't... If an official sees you with an unsafe helmet... They're stopping you. So, yeah. <laughs> now I sew my helmet straps. <laughs> sewing fixes. I also have a sewing kit in my transition bag. <laughs> you never know when something's going to rip. <laughs> so, yeah, zip ties, sewing kits. Yeah, you guys would probably laugh at my, uh, <laughs> at my backpack on my Sure. So thank you guys so much for uh, being here and sharing your knowledge. Um, like she said, they'll be around. They're around town. Yeah. Um, so if you have questions, if you want to just chat with them now, you can come up and say hi if you haven't before in the locker room or anything like that. And we like put that. our email on the bottom of the sheet. So if you guys do have follow-up questions, we're happy to answer them. Or There's no such thing as a dumb question. I know like we've all heard that from every single teacher. But we've been doing this a really long time, like together almost 40 years of triathlon experience. So. Um, We've made a lot of mistakes, and so if we could share some of our knowledge and help you teach, prevent you from having to go through some of the stuff that we've been through, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Very good. So, without further ado, Brian, you want to tell us the route for tonight? Uh, I think we're going to be heading out to uh, Hiawatha with the optional park loop in there. Um, Hiawatha is going to be, we're going to be heading straight down 8th, left at Lily's. Um, and on the trail from there to High Water Park, which is where the flagpole is. Um, if you turn there, it will be uh, one and a half, one and a half. And then if you do the optional loop inside the park, that's another mile and a half. If you go in at the dog park and come out of the dog park. And that, of course, is all marked as well. Um, and we do have a box here for keys and cell phones and stuff yeah, like that. If y'all want to bring your keys and cell phones. And then we'll take a picture outside. Yes. Um, it's pretty well when you, yeah. well, you have either low or it's, it's low packed. And there are arrows and we're going to get it right. It's all pretty good.
spray paint them onto the tree. It's one of them. Because the whole perimeter of the park. Is that like Kevin? Yeah. I have a check. I have a check. Oh, are we still live? Oh, we're still live. We're still live.